Well, hello, everybody, and welcome to this episode of the show. My very special guest is Dr. Anthony Jafrida, a board-certified physiatrist who's gone on to specialize in specialized pain techniques, and he does a lot of stuff other than that. So, Anthony, welcome to the show. Thank you so much for having me on. This is great. Very excited to be here and talk about the new cutting edge procedures in our field and some other ways that medicine is changing. You know, I like to be on the forefront of teaching, of educating patients, students, everything. So I'm very excited to dive into this and uh, see what kind of questions you want to go over and see what we can educate our listeners about. Yeah, okay. So we've been on the show here for about three years. And, you know, it's, it's great when I look at people's bios because I go, right, okay, I know what this is. And we've talked about this, talked about this. But I'm always kind of looking for that leading edge next thing, you know, or things that docs like you are highly trained. What else are you doing that is, you know, pioneering ways that we can transform not just our patients' lives, not just the physicians' lives helping patients, but also the system. So yeah. let's go back to the beginning and just give us a reasons, give us that little story of what brought you to this point uh, in your career. Yeah, so I'm from upstate New York. I've been a big athlete my whole high school career, even through college, I played baseball. Uh, and I've always been big into science. So uh, I've always liked how the body moves, the musculoskeletal, how everything moves together, how easy it is to get injured too, and how hard it is sometimes to recover from that. And I think we don't do a very good job of recovery of keeping the body moving. And when we do get injured, I think sometimes we jump to too invasive of techniques to fix it. The body is pretty good at healing itself. I don't think we're, we let it do its thing. You know, I always tell patients half of what I do is just giving your body a chance to heal what's wrong. Okay. Um, you know, I, I, I think what we're doing a good job in medicine, especially our field is getting more minimally invasive, doing less damage. I always teach all my fellows and all my residents, all my med students, how, you always have to think about what you're doing to the patient when you're doing a procedure. So that's, that's where it started for me. You know, I was an athlete and I was getting injured like all athletes do. I mean, if you play high enough level, you're going to injured at some point. And I was always wary of how can I heal this faster? How can I make this feel better faster? Cause I want to get back on the field. And then as I kind of got to that point where I realized I wasn't going to be making any money professionally playing sports, uh, that's when medicine really, really took a hold on it. And I said, well, how can I fix people that are injured? Um, and I, I love the field that I'm in because especially down here in South Florida, people are very go-getter and it, it's good to see these people get back to doing what they love. So that's what I always say. Mm -hmm. I want to get your life back, get you back to doing what you love, but I don't want to hurt you in the process. So I think mm -hmm. that's the new innovative fun stuff that we have to look into and, and keep diving into um, to make people better and give them a better quality of life. Okay, so just let's review a couple of the the um, in, interventional stuff that you do, that just to give us an overview of the uh, a day in the office for Dr. Anthony. Yeah, so a day in an office, um, we have clinic patients, we have uh, procedural patients. A lot of the clinic patients are diagnosing, right? I always stress to everyone out there, if you see a doctor that's not putting their hands on you, uh, not doing a good physical exam, not looking at all your imaging, not looking at your past history, you know, you, you really should look elsewhere because in order to treat the patient correctly, you have to get all the right information. You can't treat the patient correctly without getting the right information. Every patient unique, every patient different. So I spend a lot of time with my patients talking to them, doing a good physical exam. I'm a physiatrist by trade, like you said, board certified, and we know how to do physical exams. Tease out where is that little bit of weakness? Where is that little bit of numbness? Where's what dermatome is that? What, what, what nerve area is that? What muscles um, are controlled by that nerve? And really figure out where that ailment's coming from. Then once we figure out what's causing the issue, what's causing the patient to come see you, right? Every patient's having a problem. That's why they came to you. Um, now you have to decide how to treat this best in the least invasive manner. And, you know, I'm a big component of physical therapy, getting people moving. It, it's really, especially since COVID, People are very sedentary. I, I joke around the line I use a lot is we got really good at not doing anything, right? We got really good at doing what we're doing right now, actually. Have a conversation over Zoom and um, enjoy it and feel like you're doing something, but your body's not really doing much, right? Uh, we, we've become much more sedentary and I think we've all put on, put on some weight. So my first goal is to get those patients moving if they can. If they're in too much pain, then we'll have to do some type of procedure. And a lot of times, a lot of the minimally invasive procedures we do are injections, 
either regenerative in nature or we do epidurals, facetio injections, wherever that pain's coming from that we deem from the physical exam and from their MRIs um, and try to get that patient moving again, then get them into therapy, get rid of that acute pain, then get them moving again. Um, I, I do avoid all narcotics in my, in my practice. I don't use, I don't like to mask pain. There's no point in just shutting off a pain receptor. You're not fixing any problems. So if, if, if injections and physical therapy don't work, then we have to move to the next step. And, and 10 years ago, the next step was uh, pretty invasive spine surgery. You know, I work a lot in the spine and, and that was the next step. And we went straight from one to 10. But we're lucky now in our field that we have two, three, four, and five, which are these minimally invasive procedures that we can do through, you know, an incision about the size of a dime or the size of a quarter where we're able to go in there and maybe clean out a little bit of the stenosis or arthritis and uh, just clean it out real quick. Patient goes to sleep for about a half hour. They go home. That's called the mild procedure. We go and just clean things out. Or we do a percutaneous discectomy where we just pull a little bit of the disc out. Um, or we put a, a small, small implant as opposed to a bunch of screws and rods. We put a very small implant um, to open up that space and give room back to those nerves, you know, re reclaim some of that area to get these patients moving. And the end goal is always, I always tell patients, they always tell me, well, can you fix me? I go, I go, I can help you. In the end, you are going to fix you by strengthening that core, strengthen that back, that neck. Um, but we're getting good at it. We're getting a lot better at minimally invasive procedures. The one part that we aren't good at and we could be getting better at is the regenerative field. And we spoke about that a little bit before we got on the show, but I think PRP, stem cells, prolotherapy, all that, unfortunately, at least here in the States, is not covered by insurance. No. It gets pricey. I don't think we're able to do good studies on it yet because of that. And I think that's where the future of all of this is. I, I think if we can make the body just give it a kickstart and let it heal itself, we're good at healing. I tell patients all the time, you cut a cut in your arm, you heal it, right? Mm -hmm. You didn't do anything special. You didn't think, oh, I'm going to heal my arm. Your body just does that. Um, and we're able to do that in some spots too. If we could kind of get that milieu of stem cells and cytokines all in the right spot, working in the right direction. Unfortunately, the science, we're not there yet. Um, but that's a little tidbit of kind of how I think about my day-to-day -day life in clinic starting from taking care of the patient, listening to the patient, to fixing the right problem with the right tool. Excellent. Excellent. It was great to hear about the advancements and how things are, you know, as we do less, people get better. <laughs> I love less it. is more. Less is more. That's our <laughs> mantra. You sound like me in <laughs> my yeah. office. Okay, so let's move on. Um, before the show, we were talking about your education because, you know, you train a lot of docs, students, and... Um, you know, what are you doing that's innovative that's, you know, moving forward the whole system um, towards, yeah. you know, the next 10 years, 20 years? You know, I've always, and I, I think this, once again, akins back to my time in, in sports when I was, you know, on the team in college, I always kind of took the younger guys under my wing and tried to show them the way. And, I, and I've kind of embraced that in medicine too. You know, I didn't like the old guard of, you know, the older guys kind of beating up the younger guys. That's how it used to be in residency and fellowship. I really enjoy kind of taking these guys under your wing and really trying to teach them. So me and a few of my partners um, that I've met through social media, you know, uh, through different people that like to teach around the country, we started a company called the MedEd Combine, where it, it's amazing. All these new cutting edge procedures are coming out quickly, right? The curve is growing fast in medicine and how good we're getting at doing things. The hard part is how do I learn it? right? How do I get all this information in? I'm out of fellowship. I'm out of residency. I have a booming practice. Where do I, I have a family, I have kids, you know, where do I have time to learn this? And we started this med ed combine, which is really cool. Uh, once every three months, we get six to seven of these new cutting edge companies to come to a location. And we, we uh, stream it all live over virtual reality. And we send out headsets all over the U.S. and people are able to watch and learn how to do that procedure. We actually do the procedure on a synthetic cadaver over a half hour long period. And we talk about the procedure. It's a conversation between doctors. We have some doctors on site, some doctors through the VR headsets. We also, so, so we've had so much interest in it. We aren't able to send out enough VR headsets. We run out. So we do it over Zoom too. But it, it just gets people out there. Let's say, you know, you're in Vancouver and you want to learn about these six new procedures that'd be six weekends of having to fly all over to learn about it or people would have to come to your office and take your time this is three hours on a saturday 
you throw on the VR headset and you get as close as you can get to getting a hands-on experience. And that's the meta combine. And, and, you know, what keeps us going is the feedback we've been getting from people about it. It, it's just changing the way you learn the VR system just puts you, you know, you can learn in an OR and you're kind of just standing behind all the docs. We've all done that. You don't really see anything and no one really talks to you. And you're like, well, that was kind of a waste of a few hours, but this is like your, the, the camera puts you right next to the OR table. You can see the hands. We have multiple camera angles. We have slides. There's all these overviews, the imaging, if there's a, a fluoroscopic image or an ultrasound image, we're able to show all this around. It, it's really the next generation of learning. I actually joke when we have our meetings for the company that I think virtual reality is going to be the way we learn everything. And maybe not in five years, maybe not in 10 years, but eventually it just is so lifelike and so much more convenient. You don't have to go anywhere. Um, and it, it, it feels like it, it, it's actually kind of scary in the one sense that it feels like you're in another place, even though you're sitting on your couch. Yeah. Um, but it's fun. It's fun to see where that where that's going. And we enjoy learning, uh, teaching. So my partners, yeah, Dr. Chad Stevens, Dr. AJ Rostogi and, and Christy Owenby, we, we've really blown this up into something that's pretty cool and, and, and in order to teach all these new cutting edge procedures all over the place you know you can tune in from anywhere around the world to watch this and then we put it up on our youtube and you know everyone everyone really enjoys it so that's fun i enjoy that i enjoy teaching i enjoy hearing from the fellows and the residents that they really um are learning something so what are the you numbers know? of docs turning up for these quarters yeah so it's really funny because it, this idea grew out of covid right uh, i i was a, a, a teacher for Relevant, a, a certain company, and Chad Stevens was a teacher for Spinal Simplicity, and neither of us had learned that other uh, that other device yet. So we wanted to teach each other. So he was going to fly down to Fort Lauderdale. We we're going to bring in our marketer uh, director, Christy, and she was going to live stream it over Instagram just to have something out there to show other people what we're doing, right? And then all these other companies were like, "Yeah, we'd love to come." Striker, Corner Lock, all these other companies came, and we ended up doing the VR headsets. And just like that, we put it together. And the first show that we put together in a week had 150 people to watch. And we're like, holy cow, like that's amazing. And then we've done four shows since and we average between 250 to 400 people per show. Tune in. Wow. It's amazing. I mean, I tell people, you know, if you think about those numbers, having 250 to 400 people in an OR is impossible. You know, impossible. You can't even have that in a classroom half the time. And to be able to do that in three hours on a Saturday and teach seven different procedures is, is insane. And, and, you know, the nice thing is the viewership keeps going up, um, the interaction keeps going up, and, and we're going to keep doing it as long as people keep liking it. So it's, it's, it's interesting. It, it blew us away even how many people are tuning in, but we enjoy it, and they enjoy it, so, so it keeps us going. You know, I've always been a big believer in the COVID situation is going to create new pathways, new, new ways of doing things. It's going to, you know, save medicine, let's face it, because of the costs for medicine are crazy, especially in the States. Yeah. And it's, it's heading to bankruptcy, really. Um, and we need innovative ways to do things. And I think what you've described is brilliant. So congrats on that. Thank you. Um, yeah, yeah well, <laughs> sky's the limit, I guess, you know, internet. No, yeah, it's great. It cuts down on travel. It cuts down on to doctor's time. I mean, yeah. doctor's time is expensive, you know, to take a Friday yeah. off and lose, lose a Friday in your clinic. That's a lot of patients that aren't going to get care. And now yeah. you don't have to travel. You don't have to miss time with your family. Yeah, you know the the companies don't have to travel everywhere. It cuts costs down a lot, and hopefully, in the end, that cost will be cut down towards the patients again. Because the, the cost, yeah, like you yeah. just said, the cost of healthcare for for patients. I, I joke with my patients. I don't joke. It's the truth. I, I see health insurance from three different sides. I am a doctor, so I see it on that end. I'm an employer, so I see it from that end, and, and I'm a patient, right? And the cost just keeps going up to me on all three ends. So I don't know who's making all the money. I think it's the insurance companies or, or someone out there or just the cost just keeps going up. But it can't, it's not sustainable when we're paying these high premiums, high deductibles, <clears throat> and, and care is less accessible. It doesn't make sense to me. I don't know what's going on. Um, you know, I hope it gets figured out. It's, and like you just said, it has to get figured out or the system's just going to break. Um, so I'm hoping it gets figured out sooner than later, because it's really disheartening when you see a patient that really needs something. And you, I, I mean, I had patients today where I said, you know, this is what you need. Like, yeah, but how much is that going to cost? And you're like, man, like that shouldn't be an issue. You know, this is what you need to be able to walk normal again. 
the cost shouldn't be an issue. It may maybe like 20 bucks, 40 bucks a copay, but it shouldn't be costing them, you know, 400, $500 for every, everything they do. It's people don't have that kind of money just lying around. I, it's, it's, it's tough as a doctor and uh, to skirt that line and it's disheartening. That's not why we went into this, you know, to, to fight for, I, I don't know who we're fighting against anymore, but um, it's tough. And, and you said it down in the States here, they got to figure something out. Okay, so we also talked about before we came on Ned, about Doc Martin. Nation. Doc Nation. <laughs> Doc Nation, yeah. Maybe Doc Martins as well. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we need maybe more a pair of those. And this I got a storm here in Vancouver. There's floods everywhere. We need right, a Doc I Martins love it. On to, to, to offset the, the wet. But uh, let's talk about Doc yeah. Nation. <laughs> this is your host, Wayne Fimister. Thanks for enjoying the show today. Today I'm advertising my healing chronic pain course. Now, it covers the new science of how your brain can heal pain. It covers the heart-brain connection as well as the gut-brain connection. Also, I dive into inflammation, how you can heal that, and optimize movement as you move towards a new reality in your body. So check it out on the link below. Enjoy the show. Yeah, Doc Nation is a disruptive business. Uh, it's it's that's We're going to be some bulldogs. That's the point of it. So I've had this idea for about three or four years. Um, and it's just coming to be, I actually just had a meeting before this with uh, our Doc Nation team. And basically the best description is it is uh, we're going to be representation for doctors. Um, just like athletes have representation, you know, doctors shouldn't be the ones negotiating their contract, negotiating their insurance stuff. You know, we're not good at that. We're not taught that in med school or residency or fellowship. We're taught how to do good medicine and, and be good doctors to our patients. So this company is going to be exactly what athletes have. You know, athletes are good at playing football, are good at playing soccer, are good at playing baseball. That's what they're good at. And there's guys that take care of everything else for them. Their branding, their marketing, their contract negotiation. And, and that's what we're hoping. We, we say give the power back to the doctor, right? I think a lot of doctors are frustrated. I see it all the time. And I'm a lot, I'm in a lot of physician only groups on Facebook, on other platforms where you, it's just disheartening to see these doctors. I, I mean, there's doctors in there that are quitting to become real estate agents because they can't take the burnout of the paperwork and the, the pay per hour sometimes just isn't there for how much we put in, right? And these hospitals just coming down on you saying, you need to work more, you need to do this more. You know, it, it the gratification part is not there. And when you start seeing this, you're like, these are brilliant people that are giving up this amazing job of being honor of being a physician because they're just burning out. Um, so our goal is to take a lot. Basically, we say, you be the physician, we'll take care of everything else, your financial advising, your insurance, your life insurance, your disability insurance, um, all your contact neg contract negotiation. They start you know, telling you one thing, we'll come in, you don't have to worry about it all. You just tell us. Our guys will come in and go right to the hospital and say, this isn't in the contract. This isn't how it's going to fly. You know, because I think a lot of doctors were kind of taught to keep our heads down and just do our work. Um, and I don't think that's the right way it should be anymore. I, you know, I, I think the, 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 the analogy I always have, and it akins back to sports because that's they have agents, is you can have the best stadium. You can have the best fans. You're not doing anything without the players, right? So you can have the best hospitals. You can have the best insurances. You can have the best devices. If there's no doctors, there's no medicine. And I really think we have to start taking care of our doctors. There's a huge doctor shortage in America right now. There's a huge doctor burnout rate in America. And, and a lot of that could be taken care of very easily. Doctors just need to stand up a little bit. And I'm not saying fight back or strike at all. I just think they need representation. We don't know what we're doing. We don't. We're not good at a lot of stuff in life because we've been in med school for four years. We've been in residency. So that's exciting to get off the ground. Doc Nation, um, we're trying to make a, a, a cohort of doctors, you know, a nation we're calling it, that can all bind together and, and have like-minded thoughts and, and kind of get like-minded goals done, you know, get better insurance rates, get, get better you know, everything for the docs. Um, it's exciting. It's really exciting. Once again, the feedback is what keeps us going. The people that have already signed up, DocNation.com, you go and just click join the nation. They're are, are very excited to be a part of the team. And it, it's really funny because a lot of our agents, quote unquote, are agents from the sports world. And they they love doctors because they're a lot easier to take care of than athletes. 
Um, doctors usually aren't getting in as much trouble, so they have to deal with that. And uh, they're a lot more easygoing. They're a little better with their money. So, so everyone's it's a win-win-win for everyone. Uh, we might disrupt the insurance companies a little bit, but they're making a lot of money. You look at, you know, I'm trying to be nice here, but you you look at at last year during COVID, United Healthcare, Blue Cross Blue Shield, and they they all had their best quarter ever, Q3 of last year, when we everyone was under a major pandemic. So, if if they're not going to lose money during a major pandemic and everyone else is, uh, something's wrong in the system. Uh, not only are they not losing money, but they made their best quarter ever, and so something's wrong. So we're we're in there to try to break things up a little bit, give a little voice back to the doctors, bring the power back to the doctors, and hopefully, you know, make things a little better. Well, and, and, Th- and, and in turn, that'll, I think if we can finally, mm. you know, it really has to come back to the patient because the patients can't be paying all this money. Um, in turn, I think that'll lower costs across the board because mm. no one listens to doctors ever. And I, I think we have some good ideas on how to lower your costs. So we're hoping to just make this voice. Everyone just has to join together though. Okay, so a question. Here you are. You're doing these two innovative things to change the system. But at the end of the day, as you said, you're a patient as well. So what are you doing to balance this busy life with everything you get up to and preventing your pain, or if you do have pain, helping that? So what are you doing to help our audience who are in the midst of lots of stuff as well? And I, I think that's for the best tips from the best people. I, it's really funny. Everyone's like, how do you do everything you do, right? Like I, I have a full clinic Monday through Friday. Uh, I, I run med ed combine. I run doc nation. I have three kids under the age of three. Yeah. Um, <laughs> how, how do I stay in shape? What, first and foremost, my wife helps a lot. <laughs> she, Brittany's great. She helps out a lot, especially with the kids. They, she is wonderful with them. And she actually helps out with both companies too. She's an accountant. But how do I keep myself in straight? It's very hard. It's very hard to put time aside. I bought a Peloton because I wanted to be able to do it in my house, right? Um, so I try to do that a half hour. I try to get on there and try to get moving. It's tough though. We have a pool. I'm lucky to be in South Florida. I love swimming. I think swimming is the best thing you can do for your body. The best ex- half hour of swimming to me is the best exercise you can do. There's no impact. I don't run. You know why I don't run? Because my lower back already is starting to hurt. I'm on the young side of things. My, my lower back's already starting to hurt. My knees are already starting to hurt. I don't run anymore. I used to run all the time. You played sports. That's what you did. You ran. That's You just mindlessly ran all the time to get, stay in shape. I don't run at all anymore. So I'm either on the bike or swimming. Those are the two main things I do. Then the number one thing I do, and, and I tell this all my patients, you can't out-exercise a bad diet. You can't. You, you can if you eat cake and eat bad food all day. You could run for miles and you're, you're not going to feel well. So the number one thing I try to do is really watch what I, I take in. I really try to cut out soda. I don't know why we're so hard on, I mean, I think we're going to look back at soda as smoking, you know, 50 years from now. Like, remember those people drink soda? Um, I've cut that out almost completely. It really, really does a number on me whenever I have even one, like on the weekend, like, oh, I want to have a Diet Coke or something. And then I have it. I'm like, man, I feel terrible. Um, so I really try to cut that out. My wife's a great cook. We're really lucky that we get to and it's expensive for some people I know, but we're really lucky we get to eat pretty healthy, pretty fresh every day. Um, and I try to cut down on carbs. Like I, I know if I have a piece of pizza, I feel terrible, terrible. It tastes delicious when it's going down, right? But I feel, I, I feel like a sloth for the rest of the day. So my main thing is, is start with the diet and then follow it up with some exercise. You got to get moving. You have yeah. to get moving. It's great for your joints, for everything. But if you have it, biking and swimming to me are the two best ways you can do it. Um, the one thing I don't do that I need to do more of, and, I, and we were kind of talking about before, is a little meditation, I think, goes a long way for people with pain and people without pain. Just reset the system, if you will, mm. even if it's only five or 10 minutes. I, mm. I try to do it in the morning in the shower, even just like focus breathing. Yeah. Um, it, it's tough, though. And, and I, I feel my patients that say they don't have time, but you have to make the time because the number one thing, you could have all these cool things. You have great kids. You have a great spouse. You have great friends. You have great company. You have all the money in the world. If you don't have your health, it doesn't matter. Nothing matters without your health. And uh, I don't think people realize that until it's too late sometimes. You know, I, I tell a lot of my patients since I deal with back pain, the number one thing people take for granted is not having back pain. If you don't have back pain right now and you're listening to this, be lucky because back pain will ruin everything. If you have back pain, you can't do I have patients that can't roll over in bed at night without waking up. So if you don't have back pain, be happy. 
the ways to keep it away, keep moving. Keep that core strong. Keep that back strong. Keep moving. Get in the pool, swim, exercise at least a half hour a day. Keep those joints fluid and uh, try to have a good diet. Yeah, that's that's yeah. what I try to do. But I hear you. I can't. I, I, I hear you. It's hard. It's hard. I'm going to share. Thanks for sharing that. It's good. Brilliant. You know, you, we've got yeah. to be, we're, we're humans and we're doing the best we can. And, um, you know, these are essential things that I talk to my patients all the time about. And I'm just going to finish up with this because it's something I came across in this brilliant book called The Untethered Soul by Michael Singer. And he talks about, you know, those thoughts and those feelings that we get all the time, just let them go. As you kind of said, just, you know, be grateful that you don't have back pain. Be grateful for your life or what it is. Be grateful for just being alive for crying out loud, you know, yeah. and just yeah. let the shit go. Just let it go because it just, it's like glue, you know, it just sticks to us and it's horrible and it's not worth it. We are not thoughts and feelings. We are spirits. We're souls. You know, we're living this life. We've got all these good stuff around us and be grateful, you know, and yes, you may be in pain, but you can still use your senses and enjoy the five basic senses and make the best of it. Um, And I thought that was a wonderful, you know, overview, just a one liner almost for people when you know we know all this other stuff and we're doing all this other stuff, but it comes down to living the moment. It comes down to just being present and being grateful and, and enjoy that, it. Enjoy it. enjoy any moment you can enjoy. I think exactly. we really don't do a good time of that. We're always in our phones, you know, we're always we're missing a lot. And and not just be present, you know. Really, really enjoy it. Don't think, oh, yeah. woe is me, because everyone has problems, you know. Yeah. Everyone's been through a lot. It's it life is hard. We all know that, but it's it's exciting at the same time. Yeah. And if you can look at the exciting side of it, the hard part isn't isn't that hard. And, and you know, I love what you just said. Just let it let that go. You know, because I think a lot of our thoughts are what, like you just said too, in our minds. That's it. They're just in our minds. Um, you can live a pretty good life, no matter what, no matter what the the circumstances are. I, I like that. I like. That you know it's, you know and in any second I, my good friend friends just died today and that she was working with her last week and she's dead today you know early 60s it's like it could happen it, it can happen terrible. at any time and you know just let's enjoy this heartbeat that we're having and have fun so um listen great great to talk a- anything else you just want to wrap up with maybe a statement or you know a plug for you know what you've been talking about just i'll leave it up to you I, I think the most important thing is is less is more a lot in life. You don't always have to do everything all the time. Um, don't worry about hurrying your way through it either. If you have some pain, it might take some time to heal. Let your body heal it. Don't don't jump to what you think is a magic cure in, 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 with, with your health. Mm. You know, your body adapts over time. Mm. Um, don't don't jump to anything. I see too many patients that jump to surgery and then I see them afterwards and they're worse off or something like that. So, you know, take a step back, let your body do a little bit of work and, uh, and go from there. And also, you know, just help other people. That, that's always my mantra. Mm-hmm. You, you know, even if it's business, if it's anything, do it with the right mindset, like be a good person and then everything's so much easier after that. Um, so that's what we like to do at MedEd and Doc Nation and all those things that I do. I mean, we we want to help people. My that's what we do as doctors, though, right? That's why we went into this field. Or else, I always joke we would be we would be on Wall Street just trading money for money. The reason we're doctors is because we like to help people and we like to make things better. So, well, thanks so much, Anthony. It's been great to meet you. Great to chat. And uh, yeah, I hope to meet you one day. <laughs> yeah exciting we gotta either I, I come all the way up there or you come all the way down here it'll be fun but thank you very much for having me on this has been great i uh, looking forward to to listening to it yeah okay good thanks so much all the best have a good one